Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for coming to this session. Uh, I, am, uh, I am Masaki Sada and from uh, Tokyo, Japan. And I like to, today I'd like to talk about vacuum more efficient than ever. And before getting, my, uh, getting started, uh, let me introduce myself a little bit. Uh, my name is Masako Sawada, and I'm from Tokyo and Tokyo, Japan. And uh, I work, I'm working for uh, NTT. And I am a PostOS contributor, and I wrote uh, some patch for uh, recent PostOS release, such as uh, a replication, much pressing class replication, and freeze map and uh, skipping cleaning up index vacuum. And this is uh, today's uh, agenda of my talk. I divided my talk into uh, three parts. The in, uh, first, I, talk about, I will talk about what is vacuum. And second, is I uh, explain and I introduce uh, about three vacuum improvement uh, idea uh, with uh, evaluation results and uh, conclusion. So uh, let's get started. So who know uh, vac what vacuum is? Ah, OK, thank you. So vacuum is a uh, PostgreSQL garbage collection feature. And it uh, recover and leaves disk space occupied. So I think the vacuum is one of the most uh, important feature of PostgreSQL. Because without the vacuum, uh, PostgreSQL relation, PostgreSQL uh, table and index uh, will be increased uh, without the bounds. And we have uh, two uh, ways to execute the vacuum. The one is uh, vacuum command. We can do the vacuum command via PSQL or whatever. And we can uh, specify uh, multiple tables, and we can specify uh, the options to the vacuum command. <laughs> and another way is uh, auto vacuum. The auto vacuum feature uh, consists of uh, two uh, process, processes. <coughs> The launch, uh, auto vacuum launcher process and auto vacuum worker process. So launcher process launches uh, some worker process, and uh, po uh, auto vacuum worker process is responsible for the doing the vacuum on the database. And this is uh, a briefly uh, history of vacuum evolution. So auto vacuum feature has been introduced at Postgres eight point one. And at 8.4, the Postgres has a BGBT map. I will explain about the BGBT map later, but the BGBT map can speed up the vacuum more, uh, more faster. And at Postgres 9.6, we have a freeze map. The freeze map is actually a part of the BGBT map. And using a freeze map, we, a freeze map makes a vacuum more faster especially for a uh, very large and static table. And at PostgreSQL 11, we will have a uh, skipping index cleanup feature. So as you can see on this slide, uh, vacuum feature has been uh, improved uh, for many years. So uh, uh, but I think more improvement uh, will be needed to satisfy more complicated and difficult uh, system requirement. So what's needed for a uh, good vacuum in general? I think there are two important points. The one is we need to, uh, we need to shorten the vacuum execution time. But at the same time, uh, we need to reduce the impact on transaction processing. So to shorten the vacuum execution time, for example, we can use resources as much as possible, or we can uh, reduce the amount of work, or we can work in parallel. And to reduce the impact on transaction processing, we can uh, work largely. So next, uh, let me explain about how vacuum actually works. So vacuum works with uh, three phases. If vacuum has indexes, uh, the table has indexes. So at the first phase, at the first phase, uh, vacuum collects the garbage TIDs till maintenance uh, work memory amount of memory is consumed. And at the second phase, the vacuum index, uh, uh, vac uh, re-vacuum uh, all indexes one by one. And 
at the uh, surface a uh, re-vacuum table. And since the vacuum, uh, drilling vacuum, we read and we write uh, a lot of pages and a lot of words. So we can, I can say the vacuum is uh, this very uh, disk intensive operation. And uh, as I explained uh, before, uh, vacuum work with, uh, can work with a visibility map. So visibility map is the map uh, which uh, plug, uh, which pages uh, might have garbages using two bit per, uh, two bit per, uh, per page. So if the uh, if visibility map says uh, this page is all visible page, that means that all tuples on the page will, uh, is uh, uh, visible to the all transaction. So that means we, need, we don't need to uh, vacuum the page. So we can skip uh, the page to vacuum. So using visibility map, we can uh, reduce the amount of work for uh, first phase uh, collecting TIDs and third phase table vacuum. So to uh, organize what I took so far, so there are three factors of vacuum, pro uh, vacuum performance table size and uh, number of indexes and resources. So tab more table size increased, uh, the vacuum take, uh, table vacuum and collecting TIDs will take more longer time. And the more index, number of index, indexes increase, we uh, index vacuum more take longer time. And there are se several future, uh, possibly to have several future related to uh, these uh, factors. For example, uh, for example, uh, skipping the index cleanup, which is a new feature of PostgreSQL 11, uh, is related to the number of indexes. And in this uh, set, uh, in this talk, I'd like to talk about uh, new and propose about new PostgreSQL improvements: parallel vacuum, and differing index vacuum, and range vacuum. I will talk about uh, three improvements one by one. The first item is the parallel vacuum. And the vacuum is a single process operation. So uh, if you have a very, very large table, the vacuum takes very long time. So I have experience uh, that the vacuum didn't complete uh, over weeks or over day or over weeks. And if that large table has uh, multiple indexes, the so vacuum take more more longer time. So if you have, uh, if you now have uh, such very large table, the solution uh, there are some solutions. The first solution is dividing the large table into small pieces. For example, using table partitioning. And the second way is uh, to reduce auto uh, to reduce auto vacuum uh, delay. Uh, but even if we divide the large table into uh, child tables, small tables, uh, the child table can become more uh, large table again. And even uh, if we reduce the uh, auto vacuum delays, we will get the, uh, the additional burden on the disk I/O instead. So here, I'd like to propose uh, propose a parallel vacuum. Parallel vacuum is the, is the executing the vacuum with parallel workers using Postgres parallel, uh, parallel query infra infrastructure, which has been introduced uh, uh, Postgres 9.6. And this this can shorten the execution uh, vacuum execution time. Uh, but please note that uh, the parallel vacuum uh, will consume more disk I/O, and I submitted a patch for old, uh, parallel vacuum two years ago, and this is just still under the discussion of the uh, hackers, and because the another issue, a new uh, during the discussion, uh, another issue about relation extension lock uh, appeared. So if you're interested in this future. Uh, please refer to two threads, 
uh, block level parallel vacuum, and uh, moving relation extension lock out of heavyweight lock manager. And next, let me explain about more detail of uh, how parallel vacuum works. So this feature is still uh, still under discussion. So the design of the, this feature uh, might be uh, changed in the future. But in current my design, uh, the first phase collecting TIDs and third phase uh, vacuuming table are performed with parallel worker. So during collecting TIDs, uh, the garbage TIDs are stored into the dynamic shared memory and shared with a uh, shared among workers. And for index vacuum, uh, each index is assigned to a uh, worker. So that means uh, the, uh, um, a worker who is not assigned any index has to wait for uh, other, other workers to be finished. And in this, in this design, uh, we need to uh, make some synchronizations among workers. For, for instance, uh, we, uh, any worker should not uh, clear the garbage TIDs until the uh, other, uh, all, um, all worker finish, finish, finish to the vacuum, table vacuum. And I have, uh, I uh, wrote uh, this patch for a POC, proof of concept, and I evaluated the performance uh, improvement using uh, parallel, parallel vacuum. This is the uh, result. I, uh, in this evaluation, I used a 32 gigabyte RAM machine, and table size is 4 gigabyte, and which, is, doesn't, uh, which doesn't, doesn't not fit in the shared buffers. And I use IO driver SSD. And uh, this line graph shows the performance improvement. And the horizontal line shows the parallel degree. The parallel degree equals zero means the vacuum, uh, we vacuum, land vacuum without no, without, uh, with no workers. So that means it's the same as the ordinary vacuum. And a uh, vertical line shows uh, execution time in mere second. So look at, please look at the uh, light blue line at, and uh, the vac vacuum took uh, four, 415 milliseconds at, uh, with no uh, workers, no power workers. But, we, but at uh, eight parallel degree, uh, it took only uh, less than 100, uh, 100 milliseconds. So parallel vacuum made the vacuum uh, five times faster. Sorry? Is that parallel vacuum or is this only a feature of auto vacuum? Auto vacuum? This, uh, this eight parallel, this eight degrees, it is, it is for auto vacuum? Um, uh, no, uh, manual vacuum. Manual? Manual, uh, yes. Oh. So this saves the uh, uh, vacuum delays. Right. So it's going as fast as it Yep. And how dirty is the table? Hmm, sorry? How? How dirty is the table at this point? Uh, in this evaluation, the, uh, the, ga the garbage on the old, old pages, so vacuum need to touch all pages. Yes, yes, yes. And summary for uh, parallel vacuum. So parallel vacuum made the vacuum uh, significantly faster, but uh, please note that this consumes more CPUs and disk I.O. And the patch has been proposed, but uh, we need, uh, I need to, I, I must uh, solve, uh, resolve the relational extension lock issue first. And I, I hope that this feature is uh, will be committed in to uh, committed to Postgres twelve. So let's move on to the next topic. 
um, different index materials. <coughs> so let's look back to analysis of vacuum. As I explained uh, before, uh, the vacuum can work with visibility map. And using visibility map, we can reduce the amount of work for uh, first phase collecting TIDs and the table vacuum. Uh, but uh, we don't have such functionality for index vacuum. And it's a fact that almost the index access method required a whole scan, a whole index scan to uh, bulk, bulk deletion. And in addition to that, uh, the index vacuum can be invoked multiple times. So whenever we consume the uh, maintenance work mem uh, memory, memory. So if uh, only, uh, if uh, the table has only 10 dead tuppers and uh, on the very large table, the uh, vacuum, uh, index vacuum very, uh, take a very long, long time. And current solution, that if you, uh, Face this situation, a uh, current solution. Uh, I think there are uh, some current solutions. The first is don't trigger the auto vacuum with small threshold. But it's about only auto vacuum, so it's not about uh, manual vacuum. And I think index indexes are not easy to broad than table because index has less columns and we have hot update. So the in current process. Uh, we uh, control the auto vacuum uh, of the ta uh, table and index vacuum using one kind of uh, parameter. Uh, but I think, uh, uh, I'm not sure that that design is uh, best. And next uh, solution is uh, to increase the maintenance work mem to avoid calling index vacuum much per times. But if we Incre uh, even if we increase the maintenance work mem, the index vacuum uh, will be, uh, need to be executed at, uh, at least once. So here I'd like to propose a new uh, feature, different index vacuum. So in this feature, the basic idea is uh, we spread garbage TIDs during collecting TIDs, uh, garbage TIDs, and do not trigger the index vacuum unless the amount of uh, spilled garbage TIDs uh, reach to the threshold. So using this feature, we can reduce the number of index vacuums. So let me explain about more uh, details. The current, vacu uh, current post-rest vacuum, the table vacuum and index vacuum are always uh, happen, always executed in, uh, together in one vacuum uh, operation. Uh, but with this feature, the point of this feature is uh, to separate index vacuums from table vacuum. So that means, uh, please look at this diagram. So at first, first, at first vacuum, I vac uh, we vacuum only the table and spread the TIDs into the an another uh, spur earlier. And we don't tolerate index vacuum. Similarly, at the second vacuum, we do the vacuum only table and still spur the t garbage TIDs. And the third vacuum, we do the, uh, both t table vacuum and index vacuum because the amount of the spur spread garbage is uh, reached to the threshold. So in this, uh, in, uh, in this uh, example, we can reduce the number of the index uh, vacuum by two. So I wrote a patch, for, a patch of this uh, for a proof of concept. And about, there are related discussions on the hackers uh, seven years ago, so it's no longer uh, seems uh, make no make uh, progress, and the pro purpose that is the, uh, that was discussed on that thread uh, has a problem. Uh, the problem is uh, it breaks on disk format. 
So I wrote this, uh, I wrote this uh, feature again. Uh, yes, please. Uh, okay. Uh, the spirator must be a uh, file, okay. but uh, I will explain the, this slide. But uh, in this evaluation, I um, the spirit is spirit area is dynamic shell memory. So actually, it's not a correct implementation. So in this evaluation, uh, the I, ev I evaluated. The performance improvement by skipping the index vac uh, index vacuums. So what I did is the spur the garbage TIDs to the shared memory, the dynamic shared memory. And uh, we uh, when bulk deletion, uh, we look up the both the collected TIDs uh, and uh, spur TIDs. So sorry, when you say you're doing vacuuming on the table in between each of these, are you actually removing the tuples from the heat? I, uh, yes, <coughs> yes. For uh, correct implementation, we uh, we don't need, uh, don't have to actually remove the tupper on the heap. Okay, keep going on. Ah, sorry. Yeah, yeah uh, but, uh, what I'm trying to say is, uh, that, uh, in this evaluation, I don't, I didn't care about concurrent update and uh, durability, so it's. Not correct implementation in this. Uh, so I will show the performance result uh, of the uh, in this evaluation, uh, but uh, it shows only a difference value. It's not correct uh, value. And in uh, this evaluation, I have uh, we have two tables, a default table and a normal table. Which are uh, the three gigabyte table, and different table uh, enables this feature. And maximum spare size is 100 kilobyte, and normal table disables the, uh, this feature. And the evaluation step is uh, first I load the data, uh, 30, uh, three gigabyte data to the tables, and vacuum the vacuum tables to make visibility map. And I continue to uh, continue deleting the 5,000 tuples to make garbages and then vacuum until uh, the amount of garbages, uh, spilled out garbages, reaches to a threshold. So in this evaluation, the threshold is uh, 70,000 tuples. So that means uh, vacuum will be performed four times, but in the uh, index vacuum will be executed only the fourth vacuum. And this is the uh, uh, result of performance, uh, performance evaluation. So upper graph shows the normal table. So each uh, vacuum te took uh, about 85 seconds in average, uh, at average. And in, dif in uh, differing index uh, vacuum feature, uh, we skip the index vacuum at first, second, and third vacuum, and uh, at last, First vacuum, uh, we uh, different index vacuum took twice time than the normal because we uh, ne we needed to uh, look the collected TIDs as well as spirit TIDs, so uh, it took twice time. So summary for this feature. So please note that this uh, this performance result is not collect. Um, uh, is not quite implementation, so it's just a difference value. Uh, but I think different uh, differing index vacuum has uh, a vacuum has potentials of uh, speeding a uh, speed up the uh, vacuum is very much. And for uh, for example, in this evaluation, uh, it speed up two times faster. And more trivia required for a correct implementation uh, because. Uh, we have to prevent vacuum, I, vacuum uh, item pointers from being reused before uh, next index vacuum. And uh, in this evaluation, I, the, I use a spur 
uh, I spur, spur the garbage DIDs into the shared memory, but it's not correct. For a correct implementation, I have to use uh, five. Ah, yes, yes. Okay. And the final... Okay. So the final item is the range vacuum. Uh, this item is most uh, experimental uh, feature of this, uh, of three improvements. So I have experience as uh, DBA, and I felt that there is dilemma like this. So DBA want to, wants to the complete vacuum as quickly as possible. So DBA want to use a resource, a hardware resource as much as possible. But at the, at the same time, a DBA wants to avoid, uh, avoid both disk I/O burst and affecting to TPS by vacuum as much as possible. So DBA, want, DBA wants to use the vacuum DAs. So DBA uh, uh, need to find the answer under this gemma. So if, uh, if we use uh, the vacuum delays, we cannot uh, avoid the situation where the, there is a long learning vacuum problem. The most common uh, problem of a long learning vacuum is, I think, the long learning vacuum likely to be canceled by concurrent locking. And if the auto vacuum or uh, if the vacuum cancelled, the, the vacuum will restart again, but restart from the beginning of the terror again. So there is a big question here. Is it possible to use vacuum delay and to complete vacuum in a short time? So before looking uh, the finding the answer of this uh, question. So let's uh, look at the e uh, efficiency analysis of, of the vacuum. So as I explained before, the vacuum is a disk intensive uh, operation. So, uh, and most, ta most spend time uh, to processing one block is disk IO. So leading buffer, uh, leading from a uh, leading buffer, or uh, lighting the wall. So I think we can think at uh, the cost of a vacuum uh, block, cost of processing the one block can be regarded as almost constant. And we can think the garbage is on table might have a locality. It's quite possible in their case because the data for a specific user or data for a specific table are often accessed in the real world system. So what I want to say here is, even though vacuum requirements are uh, broke, the new free space got, uh, we got by vacuum depends on the how much garbage exists on the block. So we, so we can for, formulate this efficiency like this. So if we got free space n byte by vacuum n byte, the efficiency of, uh, efficiency of vacuum k is n over m. So if we uh, vacuum the 100 megabyte area and we got the 100 megabyte new free space, so the efficiency is really good. We got the new free space map as much as uh, we vacuumed. But if we vacuum 100 megabyte, but we got the only 10 byte new free space, the efficiency is really bad. So I think there is uh, the table has uh, uh, there is there is some place where uh, have a good efficiency or or good uh, bad efficiency. So here is a new uh, type of vacuum called range vacuum with a garbage map. So garbage map uh, is, uh, is a map 
uh, table which tracks the garbage status of a bunch of blocks, so range of blocks. And a garbage map reproduces the garbage status of the table in, uh, uh, as a file or memory. And range vacuum is uh, preferably vacuum, blo uh, vacuum blocks having higher efficiency using garbage map. And uh, trigger vacuum more frequently. So the left uh, diagram shows uh, garbage status of the PG bench account table, which is 200 gigabyte. And that table is modified uh, by random value based on the Gaussian distribution. And if, if we do the range vacuum, and the range vacuum do the only higher 10% ranges, the status of the garbage status of the table will be uh, go, will become like this. And building a garbage map is most important part of this feature. And uh, in the first implementation, I tried to make each background uh, report the garbage status to the stats collector, and the stats collector uh, generate a garbage map. But that implementation increased a significant increased transaction latency. So uh, I decided to use, uh, I said I decided to read well so that, that it doesn't increase transaction latency as much as possible. So because uh, one knows all block changes, inf block change information, so we can use a well this, for this purpose. And I try, uh, also I try to use a logical decoding a feature for this purpose, but I did not uh, use that because uh, I needed to track block level changes and I, need, I needed to track ab the transactions as well. So that's why I wrote a new module, a new background worker that continues well, uh, continues to lead well. So overview of uh, the garbage map, uh, details of the garbage map is like this. So back, uh, backend process writes the tables and wall in an ordinary way. And new background worker leads the wall, continue to lead the wall, and gener generate the garbage map per tables. And, if, uh, and when we uh, vacuum, uh, do the vacuum, or auto vacuum, uh, execute vacuum, then they ask the new uh, background worker to dump the garbage map to the uh, file. And they lead, lead and uh, use, use them. And this, uh, and the new background worker also has a real buffer, uh, like um, logical decoding has. Because two counts the garbage uh, accurate, uh, we, uh, I, I needed the real buffer because in common, uh, in, in common transaction, deleted tupper be become garbage tupper. But in our transaction, the inserted tupper become garbage tupper. So that's why I need a uh, real buffer. And using garbage map, we can find uh, the range, block ranges having higher efficiency. So in this uh, and this evaluation, uh, <clears throat> I, uh, the range vacuum uh, vacuum is only uh, thirty percent uh, higher uh, range is having uh, efficiency, higher efficiency. And this is the configuration of uh, this evaluation. I use the one hundred forty four for machine, and evaluation target is. Uh, master branch, Postgres master branch, so Postgres uh, 11. And uh, master branch with, uh, with changes of uh, range vacuum future. And I use uh, almost uh, uh, default configurations except for uh, auto vacuum, vacuum cost limit parameter so that uh, I make uh, auto vacuum run more faster. 
And, uh, and I use the PG bench TPC like benchmark at scale factor uh, 16,000. So the largest table size is uh, over 200 gigabytes. And use a custom script. The, the random value is generated based on the uh, uh, Gaussian distribution with 90% uh, probability. And I learned for uh, five hours. And run uh, open transaction for 10 minutes with 30 minutes intervals to make uh, garbage on table more faster. And what I observed in this evaluation is uh, relation size and transaction throughput and transaction latency. And this is a result of the relation size. A horizontal line shows a, a duration, time, time, and vertical line shows a, a relation size. And I used the same configuration and the same workload. So the first time, uh, 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 first auto vacuum started timing is the same. But uh, so our auto vacuum started about two hour after we uh, I started. Uh, benchmark. But in master branch, uh, the auto vacuum uh, did not complete within five hours. It took, actually, it took over uh, nine hours. Uh, but in the <coughs> range, range vacuum, uh, range vacuum runs six times, and each range vacuum processed the 10% of the uh, table uh, within five, 50 minutes in, at um, average. So as a result, uh, the in the, in the vacuum, uh, range vacuum branch uh, stopped, uh, t table bloating has, has stopped uh, in range vacuum. Ah, so green line shows the master, master branch, and the light, uh, red line shows the, the range vacuum branch. And this is the result of uh, transaction throughput and latency. The so left diagram shows the master branch, and light shows the range vacuum, and red line shows the transaction throughput, and green line shows uh, transaction latency. So in master branch, the latency become sometimes large after auto vacuum started. And throughput and latency of, of, uh, in the vacuum branch uh, was more stable than master branch. So because frequently update, updated block likely to be loaded on to, uh, exist on the shared buffer. So uh, the transaction latency uh, that didn't not uh, become, uh, did not large in the range vacuum. So summary for uh, the range vacuum. So range vacuum uh, requires uh, garbage space within minimum side effect in a short time. Uh, but invoking uh, range vacuum more frequently also means the calling, uh, executing index vacuum more frequently as well. So as I explained at the second, second idea, uh, current postgres index vacuum is not efficient. So maybe combining with differing index vacuum feature and uh, range vacuum uh, would be a good idea. And in this evaluation, uh, each uh, block range has a number of the garbage tuples. It will work works as long as the tuple size is fixed. But for variable length tuples, uh, we, uh, it might be, uh, it should be used the actual size of the garbage instead. <coughs> and in this evaluation, there is assumption that the garbage on the table has locality. But if garbage placed on the, ta uh, placed on the table uniformly, uh, we, 
need to vacuum whole table instead. So this is the conclusion of my talk. So uh, in this talk, I uh, explained and I propose three vacuum improvement, uh, parallel vacuum and different index vacuum and range vacuum with uh, garbage map. And other than that, uh, other than them, uh, there are another uh, improvement point. First is the auto vacuum scheduling. Uh, this is under discussion on the hackers and the patch has been proposed. And second is the resource management. So uh, this is not a very big topic and it's not about only vacuum. It's maybe uh, about uh, vacuum as well as uh, general query processing. So if the uh, auto vacuum uh, tailors its activity based on the system busy, it's very good. So I, I have thought that we can use a C groups uh, on the Linux system for this purpose. And I have uh, created the Postgres extension which controls C groups via, uh, via, uh, via SQL. But I have not, I, I have not, I haven't not yet evaluated anything. And uh, the three, pro, uh, the parallel vacuum, uh, only parallel vacuum is, uh, is under the discussion of the hackers. But if Postgres community interested in uh, other two uh, improvements, I'd love to uh, implement or I'd love to propose that feature on the hackers. So this is all my presentation. Thank you for listening.